All right, Photo Universe, here we are. And uh, what we're looking at there is a Buck Knives Ron Hood Hoodlum. And the reason we're looking at that is because uh, I would uh, like to point out that uh, I know this is a K5 review, but I'd like to start the K5 review by saying that uh, that uh, Photo Universe gives its condolences, and I do to Ron's family. Ron passed away in June, and uh, Ron was a cool guy. He was a veteran. I learned a lot about uh, survival and stuff from him and uh, how to make myself safer in the woods, which is what uh, survival is about. It's how to make yourself safer, okay? And uh, Ron designed this knife, um, and uh, it was being um, produced by Buck, and it's a great knife, and, um, and uh, you know, Ron, we're going to miss you. You know, I would say that Ron's in a better place, but uh, according to what I believe, that's wrong. I think the Bible clearly states that uh, we're asleep until uh, Jesus returns, and uh, so Ron's sleeping, and uh, and uh, I think he was a good guy. It's not for me to judge, but I'm pretty sure I'll get to meet him someday. I never met him in this life, but uh, I have a feeling I'm going to be hanging out with him someday in the future. So uh, till we see each other, Ron, uh, I salute you, and thanks for your service to our country, and thanks for your your videos and your your help and we learn from each other and that's how we do it okay so now let's get into our K5 review the Buck Hoodlum is one of those knives where somebody who really knew what they were doing designed it and they designed it for a purpose and it's an excellent design okay and that's my intro and I was able to work in my tribute to Ron for the K5 review. Alright. So, the K5 is one of those machines that, you know, somebody knew what they were doing designed that. And somebody designed it for a purpose, and that's not to sell cameras, but to take photographs. Okay, there are other companies, <coughs> Canon, <coughs> that will remain nameless that, you know, I'm not 100% sure they really care about making photographs. Uh, I think they just want to sell cameras. Um, don't get me wrong. Canon makes, you know, they, you know obviously they're, they're doing something right because everybody shoots Canon. And I'm not putting them down. I mean, Canon, you know, they do make great photographs. But it always seems like when you have a Canon camera that you're waiting for the next one to come out because there's features in the one you got that you don't have. And I wonder why that is. Like you would think, uh, you know, and that's why competition is great for a Canon because look at the 7D. I mean, Nikon came along and they were the underdog, so they threw they threw everything in the, but the kitchen sink into the D300. And Canon looked at that and said, you know what, we're losing market share. And so um, the uh, Canon 7D came along, and you know what? Finally, Canon decided to throw everything into one camera. I mean, the 7D is a great one of the best Canon cameras they ever made. I mean, it's got everything in it. It's all there. You're not waiting for the next upgrade. 5D Mark II, I can't say that about. When I had the 5D Mark II, I was waiting for the 5D Mark III. Because there was stuff in the 7D that I wish the 5D Mark II had. Like, how about more than five, you know, how about more than two stops exposure compensation? All right, so be that as it may, you know, here we are. So it's a little things like that that niggle at you, okay? Okay, so like what about the, the deal where in Canon you have to pay to have your button upgraded so it doesn't turn on you when you're, you know, I mean, not only does this thing have a lock on it, not only does the mode button have, mode dial have a lock on it, it's actually kind of hard to turn. And you know what, that's a good thing. I don't want this thing turning on me. Um, so, <clears throat> There's your basic controls right there. You know, some people have complained that it doesn't have a button on it that you push just to go into movie mode. And having made movies with this camera now, like, what's the problem? You know, in a way, this is the, a better movie mode because you set your dial to movie mode and now you know you're going to make a movie. So when you push the shutter button, your movie starts. Uh, you know, I think this is a more intelligent implementation than a button that I could hit in the middle of shooting stills and all of a sudden I'm in I'm taking a movie and that's never happened to me with the Lumix but I'm just saying I mean th you know this is more elegant I mean you would think that the photographer would know when they wanted to do a still and when they wanted to do a movie and that that would be a conscious choice 
Okay, and it's a stills camera, so all, you know, most of these modes are dedicated to stills, which is the way it should be. And then, hey, I want to do a movie. Okay, I'll turn my dial to movie mode and I'll push the button. It's intuitive. I didn't need to read the manual to know how to take a movie with this camera. It wasn't like it was buried somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure what people are on about there. Would I rather have a single button in the back that I push? No! I don't care. It's not that important. I, I, I don't see how it makes a difference. I mean, on the on the Panasonic, I know I have to push the red button on the back to start a movie. On the uh, Pentax here, I know I have to put it the mode dial in movie mode and push the front button. I, it's not complicated. It's, it's a different way of doing it. Yes, it is. Is it better or worse than having a dedicated movie button? No. I, I don't see where the where the reviewers are on about with that. Um, I don't know. I will say one thing though. You've got this raw FX button on the side, and that's customizable. But you know what? Be really careful if you customize that, because I was doing some handheld telephoto work that I had jumped off my tripod because I was trying to catch a bird or something. And when I was holding my telephoto, I was pushing this button and I was going into uh, bracketing mode because I had bracketing mode set. And I was like, all oh, I pushed the button, uh, take a, I pushed the shutter button, and all of a sudden I took like five shots. And I was like, what's that all about? So, you know, I, now I have this button set to artificial horizon. Because I don't really need bracketing mode. It's too easy to get into in the back here. Okay, and that's another thing. You know, there's multiple ways to set different buttons and controls. Look at that fuzz. Multiple ways to set different buttons and controls with this camera. The options are good. One of my favorite things to do with this camera when I'm shooting landscapes is I'm in AV priority, which... I pick the aperture, there's AV, so I pick the aperture, all right, with the rear dial, and then the camera picks the shutter speed, but you know what? I was doing exposure compensation by pushing the exposure compensation button and turning the dial, and I found out in the menus that I can set this button to be uh, constant exposure compensation. Now you got to be careful, because you can hit this button pretty easily, and all of a sudden you're dialing in exposure compensation when you don't want it, but when you're doing landscapes, it's good to turn that on because then I just bracket using mirror lockup, which is a cool thing. Because the auto bracketing function doesn't really use mirror lockup. So there's a tip there. All right, where was I? Okay, there's many different ways to configure this camera. Pretty much if you want to do something, it'll let you do it. And that's just the coolest thing in the world. Um, this camera is a pleasure to shoot with. I've had this camera like a month and I've already shot I think like 2,000 images with it. Um, I didn't shoot 2,000 images the whole time I had the 5D Mark II, and that was over a year. I just I just love shooting this camera. Now, in truth, I had the 7D also, and I did about 1,000 images with that, or a couple thousand images with that. So, but, um, you know what, this is gonna be multi-part. So, that's, that's, the, that's part one for the K5 review, just, and it's not really a review, it's just kind of some thoughts after shooting it for a month, and or a month and a half and shooting 2,000 images on a couple of paying jobs too. So um, that's uh, thoughts on the K5 part one, edit photo universe.